Hi, I'm Robert May from HyperMX. We're at Pocket Gamer Connect in San Francisco. Today sitting with me is Dave from Mobile Game Doctor. So Pleasure to be here. Dave, uh, you have a long and varied background in uh, game design. Can you tell me how the Mobile Game Doctor came about? Yeah, so I've been in, in the game industry, mostly in production design, a little bit of studio leadership for a little over 24 years. Uh, Spent a lot of time building games for the mass market, started off in kids' games at Learning Company, worked at Pogo, built mass market web games, started and ran their digital download business, started a studio for PopCap, actually, right here in San Francisco. It slowly turned from me running around freelancing into a little company. We have a team of about a half dozen, averaging 20 years of game design experience, plugging into a variety of mostly free-to-play, mostly mobile projects. We do a little bit of console, some connected toys, but really helping developers solve tough design challenges. What are some common mistakes that even well-established developers make? So I think that there is a fine art to getting a team on track creatively. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of work training teams to really think about what is the creative core of your game? Why does your game have, honestly, a right to exist? How is it going to attract an audience? How is it going to align? And I think often teams fail to actually ask those tough questions up front. A lot of teams tend to run on impulse. They don't think about what the key drivers of fun in their game are and use it to kind of filter down the design. Another common mistake I find developers making is really as they think about things like monetization structure, thinking more about what they're pushing for as opposed to what player needs are, how they're going to drive value. So many of today's successful free-to-play monetization strategies evolved out of Facebook games. Oh, yeah. So, so what's changed since then, and, and what stayed the same? So a lot of the design of early Facebook games was kind of predicated on the notion that there was an endless flood of cheap users that could be hooked through viral channels. That's not so true anymore, right? So it's you can't have a game that's spammy and just tries to drive itself out there that way. Your game's got to really be well-structured, monetize well, retain well, have a good hook for marketing to have any chance in the current market. So as a game consultant, at what point in the design process do you start to think about monetization? If you are not thinking about monetization from the very earliest days mm -hmm. of your design process, you're going to struggle to get it in there at all. Is there a game in the app stores that you think is particularly innovative from a design standpoint? The thing that blew my mind this year, actually, was HQ Trivia, right? Here is a game that is literally dead 23 hours and 30 minutes of every day. You go in and there's a UI screen that says, come back at this time, and you have $1.71 in your bank account. It has done what millions of dollars of marketing have not done for the broadcast TV networks, which is actually make millennials get entertainment on the provider's schedule, right? Given your extensive experience in the industry, what's a piece of advice that you would give to a game developer who's just getting started out? Really think about what's fun and what's different about your game. Document it, write it down, put it in front of you every day. Focus your design on the things that matter. Throw away the extraneous stuff. And really understand your market. Dave, thanks so much for joining us today. Robert, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much.